everybody. You are now tuned into The Blackout, shining a light on Black excellence, activism, and culture on Afro Vibes Television, now streaming on Roku TV. Today, we have a very special guest. He has been here before. I'm very honored and elated that he has chosen to come back. He is actually one of the biggest shows that I've had thus far to date with almost 24,000 views, hundreds of comments. He really came in and gave us a lot of information, told us about culture, religion, you know, all the things that he liked to do, stir the pot. So we're going to do it again today, but definitely lead with some education. So thank you so much for coming back, Commander General. Thank you so much for having me. I so appreciate it. Absolutely. So before we hop straight in, for the people that may have not seen our first interview, tell us a little bit about what the ISUPK organization is all about. Okay, the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge, acronym is ISUPK, and we are a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to the re-education of Black people, Latino people, and Native Indian people. Our job is to bring our people back to our culture and identity and our laws. And in doing so, we believe that we can build a better Black society, a better Latino society, and a better Native Indian society, and can combat, you know, all of the issues that come up with white supremacy and white racism that has plagued our lives for so many hundreds of years. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys have definitely been consistent with going out into the community, practicing what you preach, making sure that you, you unite people of color, especially in the black community, black and brown communities, because that's how I originally saw um, your camp. I was somewhere in downtown Houston. I seen a group of brothers out there, you know, dressed in black. They was talking and preaching. I was like, you know what, as black people, you know, we have so many different um, things about us and so many different backgrounds. We don't all just come from the same environment as people may right. think. We really do have other things that we have to be able to put out there into the culture that people don't really know about. And so me presenting ISUPK again is giving more people the opportunity to learn, hey, this is something that you can be a part of if you feel like you identify with this. So just to hop straight in. Um, Thank you for that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just to hop straight in. So one thing I have noticed is that ISUPK has become very visible on Facebook over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. A lot of brothers, boy, they are not afraid to speak their peace and they yeah. I'm all for it, you know? Right, so right. I have, you know, had some of my peers that they agree with some of the stuff that ISUPK and then some feel like it's an extreme black group, right? So right. how you define it for those that may not really understand the message that you guys are trying to send out? Um, in, in essence, we are an extreme group and we and we're in an extreme we're an extreme group because we're in an extreme time. Anybody that believes we are too extreme is probably not fully aware of how much danger black and Latino and Native Indian people are in. We're the, we're the way we are because of the condition we're in. We all know about the experiments that were done on black people in Tul Tulsa, Oklahoma. We know about Ronald Reagan probably the biggest drug dealer in the world and how he spread that crack cocaine in every black ghetto, destroyed families, killed babies. Like we're in a massive genocidal program. And this program that we're in also comes with, you know, uh, some brainwashing that makes our people often not take what's going on so serious. 350,000 abortions every year in the black and Latino community. That's not, you know, planned parenthood. That's planned genocide. And it's funded by the government to the tune of half a billion dollars. And every Black political organization is on board with it. every single one, the entire Black caucus, NAACP. Like, we are in an extreme emergency, and we don't see that we're in an extreme emergency. So, yes, people, those that, some people do look at us like, you know, they are way too left. They're not... Um, palatable to the masses. But guess what I've noticed over the last several years since Donald Trump has been in office? Since Donald Trump has been in office, we've become very palatable. You know what I mean? We've become where, you know, people now are saying, well, you know, maybe they wasn't just as crazy as we thought they were. Maybe there was something to what they were saying because, of course, nobody believed 
that America, especially after Obama, nobody believed that America would have gone so far right. So when you have a, a extreme right wing, pretty much white supremacist in the White House, you better have some extreme black people that's ready to come up against that. You know what I mean? And push back against the evil that was going on. So many people got in touch with us and was so confused about the future, especially right after the election. They were so confused about, you know, how are we going to go forward? What's going to happen to black people? What is our lives going to be like? And thank the Lord that we in the ISUBK were able to provide those answers. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we, we, we uh, enjoy that title. And you know what, I definitely want to get some insight just on what you think as far as like the Trump administration taking over the last four years. I know a lot of people have been um, upset, but I almost feel like it was a blessing and a curse, right? Because it showed that, you know, the, sorry, one sick, you know, we'll keep going. It showed that um, racism does exist, right? A lot of people thought that it didn't exist because they didn't hear about it, but it does. And right. so fortunately, the entire world had to take a seat and watch us for the first time because we always go into other people's camps. We tell other people about democracy and how to do what they do, but then they watched it and said, but wait, there's dictatorship going on. What do you think even led to this after the Obama administration having the first black president? How did we get here? We, that's how we got here. We got here by doing something we should never do. We should never, ever, ever attempt to join ourselves to the people that put us in slavery like before this happened you know you know me i was on this your show what three years ago and i said the white man is the devil <laughs> a lot of people didn't like that now i'm back again i guarantee you a lot of people ain't gonna be too upset when they hear me say the white man is the devil because yeah. of course now we see oh there was something to it it was definitely something to it. And, and here's the thing. We, we voted against the advice of the ISUBK. We voted Barack Obama in as president. We joined ourselves to him. We made ourselves, you know, his subordinates, to so to speak. We, we became his cheerleading crowd. We got behind him. He got in office, and the first thing Wall Street did was package up all our mortgages and steal all our houses. Yeah. We had a housing crisis, and they robbed the Black people blind because now they had a black president or what they considered a black president. So now it was as though, okay, they got a black president. They can't blame him for if we go in here and rob them. We better learn that white people are thieves on all levels. They're gangsters. Donald Trump is a gangster. He's a white supremacist gangster is what he is. And we had better learn this about them. You can't run casinos in Las Vegas unless you really close with the mob or at least you and them have a very clear understanding. You ain't running gaming in New Jersey, okay, the home of the mob, one of the homes of the mob, and you don't know how to go about dealing with them and handling them. You're not going to be a construction tycoon if you cannot relate to gangsters who run in all the concrete in America. And we put this gangster in, white, in the White House, and here's why. Because Donald Trump got in the White House and also got, let's, let's remember, after four years of putting babies in cages, four years of, of all racist rhetoric, calling Latinos a bunch of rape, rapists, calling uh, uh, African countries, what do you call them? Shitholes, shithole countries. I know you probably got to edit all this out, but. Oh, no. I'm going to let it go. Okay. Right on right here. <laughs> okay, okay. Like, you know what I mean? They, like, after him, you know, showing he's a clear racist, this election, he still got 70 million votes to Jer Joe Biden, 75 million, which shows you that, okay, and let me say this, if he wasn't such a damn idiot and he knew how to talk and he knew when to shut his mouth, he would have won the election because the other five or six million that he needed would have taken him over Joe Biden if he didn't act so much like a damn lunatic. So he pretty much put himself out of office. He didn't, he didn't really get that clearly beat. And what does that tell us? It tells us a great lesson, that when we got, we believe, and remember now, if you remember back then, people were saying that we were post-racial after Obama got in office. People were calling him, Farrakhan called him the Messiah. 
said, when the Messiah comes, the children will listen or something. I'm paraphrasing. I mean, we've said, we, we endorsed having him in the White House like it was the greatest thing in the earth. And what happened? White people got galvanized. They came together with the one tool that white people can always come together on. And that is their racism against us. You want to unite white people? You bring forth some white supremacy and you do it in a real cool way. And that's what he did. And that's how he, and remember, he was pretty much running for office from the day Obama got in office. How did he run? What, what do I mean by that? For the eight years that Obama was in office, he kept questioning Obama's birth certificate. He's not really, a, he's not really an American. He's not really, that was his campaign to say black people shouldn't be in the White House. Not that I endorse Obama or have any sympathy for him. He's just another politician, another mouthpiece, and he's not even our people. He's, he's, he's another nation. So my point is this. Him, that brown skin in that White House gave Donald Trump the platform who otherwise could never have won an election. Gave him the platform to become the president of the United States by just tapping into that white supremacy. So we should see that. And here's the sad part, if I could. Stop me if I run on a little too much. Because this is one of those topics that's so, you know, in our community. Yeah. Now we are about to take what I call the biggest bottle of NyQuil you ever seen poured out in the black community. Because now that Joe Biden, another white man, who also signed the crime bill, who wrote the crime bill, has Kamala Harris in office. So now they went from an extreme white supremacist to now I'm going to give you some NyQuil. You can rest and, and relax. Don't have to worry about racism anymore when, in fact, we about to get it. You it's know, about to so. go worse. It's about to go right back to what yeah. we thought wasn't going to happen because people forget that so many black people died while Obama was yeah, president at the time. And since he's been gone, it hasn't gotten any better. And it's only going to get worse because you have to think about those people that feel like we're taking a country away from them again. Yes. They feel like they have to prove a point. And it's gotten to, it's, it's just gotten so bad that, you know, I just seen a, a segment the other day about a little boy, almost like a lynching, modern day lynching is Emmett Till. I heard about that. And it's getting that bad that I'm afraid for my sons to go outside without me being there. You know what I'm saying? That's wise. It, it makes you kind of feel like, okay, dang, why don't we have an extremist black group that can go out there and stand in front of the White House and say, hey, we're not going to take this anymore. We're not going to have police brutality. We're not going to have policies and procedures that don't apply to the black community. But we have to keep fighting for those things. And it's, it's a long way to go. And I think when we have leaders like you, even if it's fair kind, whoever, telling us, hey, let's, let's start unifying and sticking together, then that can actually prosper and happen. But... I feel like we still got such a long way to go. You know what I'm saying? People are I know what you, I know what you're saying, but but you know what? We keep missing on this thing. This is what we miss. We we're fighting for them for policies to change. We're fighting for things to change. When what we really should fight for is for us to unify in the steps it takes. We don't. It, it, it's not a long way to go if we do it right. You know. You know what I mean? Like like you're not gonna tell me that. You know, you could take a small thing like, you know, cars that we buy, alcohol that we purchase. You could take any one of those small things and some big things and you could you could force uh, white America to do what they're supposed to do. And a great example of that was what went on with sports. The coronavirus was a wake up call. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, LeBron James had Trump by the ball, excuse my friend. I mean, he had Trump backed up against the wall and furious. Yeah. And guess who called him up and told him to not to protest? It was Obama that got on the phone and called LeBron and said, hey, don't go forward. And that was such a mistake because it was such an opportunity to break up. And now, unfortunately, I want you to finish that, but our time is getting ready to go to commercial break. No, no sweat. Go ahead. Pick up right back there. Thank you so much, guys. We've got to go to a quick commercial break. We're going to come right back with the commanding general, Mr. Yahana himself from ISUPK. Don't go anywhere. Tune right back in.
guys, you're now tuned right back into the blackout, shining a light on black excellence, activism, and culture with your girl Tequila on Afro Vibes Television. And we are still on our Zoom call with the amazing commanding General Yahana, of course, from the ISUPK. If you've watched my show a couple years ago, you are very familiar with who he is. He's going to keep it real with us today and give us his thoughts and opinions on what's all going on in America. Now, one of the things that you were leading off and saying before the commercial break was Obama had actually asked LeBron not to protest. Tell us a little bit about what happened. Yeah, according to uh, what we've read and seen in, uh, in the media, uh, you know, uh, LeBron and them were, and his people were about to walk out and really bring the National Basketball League to its knees. Mm -hmm. And our understanding is that Obama made the phone call that stopped that protest because it was going so far and it was close to the campaign for putting Joe Biden in office. So he stepped in and, and got them to stop that protest. My point was, you know, Roger Goodell uh, uh, and the rest of those powerful people came begging. A minute ago, they had nothing to say with throwing Kaepernick out of, out of the, NB, uh, you know, the um, NFL. But then, get, given enough time with that coronavirus and that thing shut down and enough protests when it came time to reopen, what did we see? We finally saw white men of super powerful status humble to their needs, apologetic for what they had done, and prepared to play ball. And it should, be, it should, it should have and should be a great lesson for us, a lesson that this is how you really resolve issues. We, we're in the brainwashed mindset that you resolve issues by pretty much begging and beseeching and trying to convince powerful white people that they shouldn't be racist. And for our efforts, they give us some crumbs. And for those crumbs, we are thankful. When what the Lord just showed us during the coronavirus is, if you really want to make sweeping changes, then you have to resist them to the point that they come to the table and deal with you right. And if we were to do that, you would see sweeping changes in the black community. And one thing we know all know about white people, when you hurt them in the pocket, oh, they mind, they ready to listen then. Yes. Dry up, oh, they want to sit down and talk. They like butter at that point. Because that coronavirus, when it first hit in March and the stock market crashed and economy went down, I mean, Black people weren't getting upset. Latino people weren't getting upset because we know what survival is when you lack financial security. But see, white people weren't familiar with that because That's they've right. always been a couple steps ahead of us. So when they got down to the playing field where we were, it was like oh, coronavirus, not that serious. We need to open the economy. And you know what that showed me? They valued capitalism and money more than they value human life. And yes. God has a way of speaking when you don't listen. So God yes. had this, literally, he stopped the entire world at the same yeah. time. You right. It was a smack in the face to so many of them. And I always tell my friends, um, white people are at the point where they're losing power and control. And when they lose power and control, they got to take everybody down with them. That's right. They, they messed up though, because when uh -huh. they started with the Trump administration, they started building them cages for the Latino community. They already had a history of enslaving the Black community, the Asian community. This has gone on so long. Now all the people of color looking at each other like, wait a minute. <laughs> We've been thinking this entire time we're better than Black people, but they don't treat us no different than Black people. So a lot That's of people right. had a humbling experience in 2020. Yes, they did. I mean, it brought them to their absolute knees. I mean, you know, you, you, you go into a local Chinese restaurant, and if you were in there more than 30 minutes, you were bound to see an argument between some customer and some uh, person in there. Well, all that changed during the coronavirus. I've, I've never had better service <laughs> when, until that coronavirus came into play. Then, it, then things changed tremendously because, of course, you know, that kind of force is what makes them stop the evil that's in their heart. And that's what we need to do. And that's why the ISUBK is so dedicated to that. And, of course, believing and knowing that we are the lost 12 tribes of the children of Israel. We're the greatest people on earth. We're the most creative people that they've ever seen. 
Mm. And it's, it's, it's probably very hard work for them to maintain their white supremacy. It probably is an extremely difficult thing for them to do because of how amazing we are. And we will return. And you just cannot keep us in captivity forever. Eventually, yeah. we're going to just rise to, it's just in our nature. It's just who we are. And I and that's think that's what bothers them so much that Black people oh, yeah. have a spirit of overcoming because they weren't intending for us to be here after slavery. They thought we were going to build America, then that would be the end for us. And it's like, here we are till this day. They're still killing us. They're still, you know, not giving us a fair chance when it comes to getting loans, getting business credit, you know, all these things that we're just now learning in 2020. I've right. seen more Black people become entrepreneurs and start having ownership this year than I've ever seen. And it's because we were put in a position when the economy fell down to start being passionate and creating things that had already been inside of us. And then That's we right. realized, oh, we can use social media. We don't have to do brick and mortar anymore. I can reach somebody way over yonder <laughs> through Instagram, through Facebook. And now I see just so many black businesses. And I think they're fearful of that, that we may not need them anymore. <laughs> I think you're right. I, and I know for a fact that this is one of the things that has terrorized Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Hollywood is terrorized because you no longer need Hollywood to make movies, to make TV shows, to make, uh, you know, series, to make uh, documentaries. So now they are terrified. You know, when I, when I think about people like Harvey Weinstein and all of the rape and molestation he did, he was able to get away with so much of it because you had to go to him to produce anything you wanted produced. And now black people don't have to go to him anymore. Black people can work the system themselves. And as a result, they, it's, it's not as centralized. So they're taking a bad hit. They're taking a hit in a place where I'm actually happy they're taking a hit, even though it's hurting the artists and that is in the music industry. The music industry, they're getting killed in the music industry. If not for Spotify and iHeart, they'd be done. But the, what's beautiful about it is artists are now able to do their own thing and they can no longer hold us back. And what that does on a whole nother level is they no longer can dictate the music, which means they, can, they have less power to shape our culture. Yeah. Because now, in, and I suspect in a short period of time, we'll start seeing really nice classical artists, artists of all types, yeah. in the Black and Latino community. Things we thought were unpopular will now become popular. And they'll no longer be able to push us into an immoral state. You know, I just did a show last night, if I could real quick, about Cardi B and the whole controversy with her uh, taking a photograph as an Indian goddess. People from India and in the Indian community were upset and cursed her out and said all kinds of things about her when this was one of the producer's uh, photo shoots. And the point I was making is that now, you know, people like her will not have to be beholden to a giant record label and can now do their own thing and no longer have to be influenced by what they do. And that for us is everything. Every walk towards freedom, every walk towards uh, them not having control of us, every step we take like that is very great for us. And if we learn this lesson, we'll also find our way back to our true identity, which is the 12 tribes of Israel. And then it's, a, it's game over after that, you know, yeah. for them. Absolutely. And just with everything that you're saying, it just makes me think about how accountable we have become as Black people with each other. Now we're saying, hey, you got to be accountable as a woman and make sure you got some type of a male figure in your household to help you with your sons. Hey, you got to be accountable and be a father to these children. You got to be in the household. We're having that conversation now. It's no longer cool to be dependent on the child support system, welfare system. We all want better as Black people. That's um, right. You know, unfortunately, it took hard times times to see it you know it did but some way or another it had to happen and I think for a long time white men created a structure that placed black women as the breadwinner the head of the household and it brought the black man down to the point that he was literally running from responsibility just like they did in slavery right they say it's like um 
generational as it comes down throughout the line. They've been conditioned to leave black women. That's, that's from slavery. That's not just something they woke up and decided to do today. So we're trying to re, you know, rechange our minds on how we think in the structure that we're living in. And I think that bothers white men because like you said in Hollywood, we we're tearing down that power structure. It used to be really hard for a person to get a role in a television series or a movie. And now people are able to create this amazing content on different platforms like TikTok and Instagram and young people are supporting it. And they're saying, no, we don't need you anymore. And That's I don't right. know how they're going to get around technology because it's, it's one of them things that can work well, for you and it can work against you. Right. Well, you know, and you, what you're saying is so right. I mean, you could pop open an iPhone and, and do a TV series, yeah. you know what I mean, on an iPhone. Hello. <laughs> and what, you know what I mean? So, but what they're going to attempt to do, whether they succeed or not, we don't know. But what they'll attempt to do is they'll attempt to uh, destroy your ability to use social media. They'll, right. try, they'll try to make, you know, rule. They already started, YouTube started a whole thing about, uh, children and you know videos being addressed to children all of that is the slow walk to some form of regulation that they can start to of course oppress us and then in that oppression just steal everything from us like they've been doing and it's sad in this that those community that, that particularly the white Jewish community has been able to monopolize that industry and push and press all of the decadent and lawless things that we get caught up into while never pushing and promoting it to their own community. They don't mind us swinging on a pole. They don't mind us making videos that make a woman like a whore. They don't mind us making videos shooting and killing each other, but they make sure that they're not making those videos among their own, but they're making a ton of money off of us while doing. we could be the immoral people. They got no problem with that. But as long as their morality is intact, they're fine. Well, they're losing that power. Hmm. Thanks be to the Lord, they're losing it. Because now there's so many people with great content and positive messages. And they're now able to bring those things to the forefront. We don't have to be drug dealers and, and pimps and hoes. We don't have to be whatever they wanted us to be created to. And we're not to be that way anyway, which is why God got a law in the Bible to never mix with them, to never, I know, you know, you may have a different perspective, but in the Israelite school of UPK, we staunchly against any other nation. We staunchly against marrying them, joining them, doing anything with these nations, because it, to us, it's an offense, one, against the Lord, and two, it's, in essence, it's a security risk, because we are you know, people that are in extreme danger, and the last thing we need to do is spill out our greatness and resources on somebody else, you yeah. know? And a lot of Black people, they have to make sure that they're aware that, you know, our DNA is like gold for them. Yes. And they use our yes. DNA for everything. And when That's you mention right. Planned Parenthood, just to piggyback, I was going to say that, you know, more white women are incapable of having a uh, being able to have children now because of infertility. So if people pay attention, all of a sudden you got this uterus transplants, right? That mm. you can just take out of one woman and put in another, or mm. they've been really, really pushing, uh, what do you call it when another woman has the baby, uh, surrogate. Surrogate, yeah, surrogate, surrogate mothers, that's right. They're finding other ways to and keep their life going. It's trying to slow us down because at this rate, we're about to pass them up. It, it's really over if you ask me, because yeah, I you think can't write right. DNA. We probably have, they're probably lying about the number. We yeah. probably have the faster. And they know it, and, they, and they're and scared to death of it. And it's good they're scared to death of it. 400 years of horrible, horrible, ruthless, merciless oppression. Yeah. You know, you reap what you sow. And they know that day is coming, and may the Lord give them all that they deserve. I pray he give them every ounce of dessert to the last spoonful, because they deserve it for what they've done. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Let them yeah. enjoy every bit of it because what we've suffered, just if you just take the crack error alone or just take the abortion uh, scheme alone or you just take the drug dealing scheme that led to so much murders alone, you know, if you just take one small segment of what they've done. I just did a show recently on the, on the model minority where the State Department had an entire program in the 60s to promote Asians over us. And to give us the illusion that they were smarter than us, give us the illusion that they were better educated and studied math 
and come to find out they're just as dumb as dumb could be, and all of it is a damn lie. You know what I mean? But the government spent all these millions of dollars creating this illusion and making black people. And then when I talked to so many people in the UPK, they was like, man, Yana, you know, that show, I relate to that because I had Asians in my class and I was treated like they were smarter than me. Meanwhile, I could see that I'm in class with them. I could see they were no smarter than me. Mm. And it's a shame that we had to go through all of those. And if you take just one of the many ways that we've been oppressed here, you know, you, you, it would make you just the Tuskegee experiment alone should make us just the burning down of Black Wall Street. There's a thousand cases alone that should make us extremely weary and extremely, you know, concerned with anything that comes along that says we need to join up with them. We need to be a part with them. We need to, you know, we need to let things go. Slavery was in the past. No, slavery is going on right now. And we should keep our eye on the ball and keep the pressure on them. So that's why we love the radical side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at least, you know, you're being able to speak out in a way that people can understand without being loud and boisterous. Because the way that you're communicating to me, is just like, okay, yeah, we on the same page. I feel the exact same way. But I think some people are afraid because they're, yeah. they're, they, they don't know what the consequences can be for us standing up. But at this point, what can we really lose, right? We've already mm -hmm. lost so much. It's time for us to gain so much more. And one of the things I want to talk to you about before our show kind of begins to close out is I know you said in the ISUPK, you guys are really good at uniting the Latino community, the Native community, and the Black community. And one mm -hmm. conversation I had with this Latino brother the other day, um, he was saying, yeah, you know, um, I love Black women. He was like, unfortunately, it's a lot of my Latino women. They don't realize they're sisters. He's like, the white man has convinced them that they are white. And right. that's been another reason why they supported the Trump administration. And they were some of the largest voters for Trump. Right. Where is that um, disconnect coming from? And how has the ISUPK, you, I'm sorry, the ISUPK been able to help them identify with their true culture and roots? That's a, that's a very, that's an excellent question. And let me, let me tell you how. We've, we've been able to do it in an excellent way, and it's simply based on the history. We've traced back the history of Puerto Ricans to the Taino Indians, to their original roots as one of the 12 tribes. We've pulled together records of the 15th and 16th century explorers who said that they came to Americas and found these Latino groups, and they were speaking Hebrew. They even wrote documents and wrote um, records on what they were talking about. And come to find out when, if you can convince our Latino brothers to check their history, to really go back into their history records, you, they'll begin to see for themselves that they are related to us because there were 12 tribes, so 12 families. So even though they're a different tribe, they're still part of the same nation. And as they begin to study and see it, man, it opens up the floodgate that brings us together. And really, to be honest with you, that divide came from the mass incarceration. When we were mass, when, when they incarcerated us on great levels, like anybody in a cage, you just, you devolve into an animal-like state. And our brothers in those cages, of course, began to, for, for safety and protection in such a dangerous place, we began to gravitate to each of our tribes. Yeah. And so our Latino brothers went to Latino tribes, our black brothers went to black tribes. And as these brothers and sisters began to come out of prison, they came out of prison with a enemy mentality to the other tribes. And we all know the old Roman adage, divide and conquer. And that's exactly what he did. He divided us so he could conquer us. And so we're divided. You go to those California prisons, they're all divided. Blacks in one section, Latinos in another, white supremacists in another. And the Latinos don't know and the Blacks don't know that we're supposed to be together. They're bridging the gap now. They're doing a great job at bridging the gap now on the West Coast. And the East Coast has always been trying to bridge that gap. But that's the way to bring us back. It has to be a common, we have to realize we're all in one gang. And that gang is the 12 lost tribes of the children of Israel. That's our gang, so to speak. Not literally, of course, but so to speak. And that's how we've been able to break, bridge that gap. And we got to lose our hatred for the Latinos. There was a lot of black people hate yeah. the Latinos. And a lot of Latinos hate blacks. And a, lot, and a lot of real Latinos are angry 
that they, a lot of their people believe that they're white. And, and you can and, and they can't convince those Latinos that they're not white unless they can go back and bring them back to their identity. Like you pull their culture in, then it's like, oh, wait a minute, we are these people. You know what I mean? You go back and pull up those Taino Indians, they wore borders of blues, fringes. Some of them had shields on in the paintings that were painted of them, feathers in their hair, all the things that you read about, bells, studs. These are, these are um, cultural customs that are written in the Bible. How is it that they traveled to this side of the world, found all these native people, and these native people's dress code and culture is exactly the same as the people that live in the Middle East. Hmm. How could that be unless they would have descended to those people? And that's, and that's how we do it. That's how with true love for our other tribes, you know? Absolutely. Well, before we got to here, I just have one last question. What do you feel like your prediction is going to be now that the Biden and Harris administration is going to start taking over as far as people of color uh, starting to kind of progress within the nation? I, I think black men are in extreme danger now. Mm. You have a, you're going to have a president, especially, I'm saying black people in period, of course. When I say black men, it, it, it means all of us because you destroy black men, you destroy the black community. Here's my concern. Here's my prediction. You have a president who is responsible for signing the crime bill. You have a vice president who's responsible for, you know, big incarcerations in California and keeping prisoners in prison, even after it was discovered that they were innocent for the sole purpose of continuing to allow the state to make money. So now you have two people who have walked down the same path as destroying black people. Now, if you're dumb, you'll just believe the rhetoric and believe it's a new day and they're going to do things different. But if you're kind, if you got a little smarts to you, then you're pretty much going to know that it's going to be a lot of the same. And a lot, you know, a lot of black men voted for Donald Trump and the Democratic Party are furious with black men right now. So they're mad at black men for voting for Donald Trump. They're mad at black men. Uh, uh, for, you know, based on their histories. So I, I suspect a lot more of the same. But here's what's going to be so sad about it. It's going to be so difficult for Black people to be angry at those that oppress us when they have a Black, so-called Black vice president in the office. Yeah. You know what I mean? The greatest weapon they've ever used against us in America, in my opinion, has been the weapon to tell us that it's our fault. It's gonna be so easy now to say, these black men need to get off the corner. These black men always doing crime. These black men this, these black men that. And of, of course, it'll trickle down to our women, to our children, to all of that. But the ISUBK, we're not having that. Yeah. We're not having that. We more, we more, we're stronger and more powerful than we've ever been before. And we're gonna make sure that our people know and understand that we're not going down that route. We're going to fix this thing, you know? So oh, yes. It's past time. It's past due. And I think now there's really no running from everything that we witnessed over the last four years. If you true, choose true. not to acknowledge it, then you're choosing to live in a false reality. And at this point, <laughs> it's, it's in front of your face. So either you're going to take the knowledge and do something with it, or you're just going to stay complacent. So I just pray to God that, you know, we continue to move forward because I really believe we have, a long way to go. We got a lot more coming up against us than what we've been dealing with. People just don't see it yet. And with That's coronavirus, right. um, I just heard that they shut down Georgia. And with me living in Houston, you know, Texas is leading the nation in mm. uh, deaths as well as mm. cases. So we're probably going to be right back at square run, square one. So a lot of people will have some time to think again, you know, to think about That's what's going right. on. And, and, and we're, he and we're, we're hearing it. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that, and we're hearing the, the possibility of a mass truck strike coming up, which means the food. Mm -hmm. So if trucks shut down, the food shuts down. So we're hearing about it. We don't know how sure it is, but towards the end of the month. And with the surge in coronavirus, who knows what they'll do to us? Why not kill us off and cut, the re cut their losses in, re in terms of resources? Why spend all that money on us? Because God wants us to learn how to go garden some real stuff in our backyard <laughs> and stop buying that processed food that's contributing to the things that's wrong with us today. That's right. <laughs> like I said, God is, he's, he's taking all of this down. 
He's like, Look, right. I'll let y'all have y'all fun. <laughs> yes, but, but now, now it's time for you to start it. taking. Right. But I put you in a position you don't have no choice but to survive and learn. So I, right. I think we, we definitely going to get there. But I'm just so glad that you came back to my show. You know, you always welcome here. I have a good conversation. I'm so appreciate it. Before we so got in here, man, tell them, you know, about how they can join ISEPK, where some of your learning centers and um, organizations are in different cities that if they want to join and just be a part of it and learn more. Yeah, the easiest way to get in touch with us is just simply go to isupk.com. And you can look up whatever city that you're in. More than likely, we have a school or a camp in that city. We have a ton of amazing programs, especially our food programs. Our food programs around this country have exploded. I mean, we, we're shipping out ton, thousands and thousands of tons of food being distributed in the Black Latino community right now, and everybody could get on board with it. Another great thing we have, we have another, and I mentioned these things before, we have an excellent, did I lose you? I think I lost. Okay, it, right? I think the mic had went in. It's okay. Go ahead. Keep going. Oh, okay. Then another great thing we have is a lot of people are in desperate need of counseling right now because they don't have answers. They don't understand it. Stress beyond belief. A lot of people with no jobs, losing everything. And if these, if these animals allow these courts to go back into the evictions, you're going to about to see millions of black people and Latino people homeless on the street. They'll, their, their, their furniture will be piled up blocks to blo blocks on end of their things, because of course, this is what they, you know, they're capable of anything. So get a www.isupk.com is the, is the website. Everybody can jump in, jump on, get our resources. All our classes are online and free, Monday through Friday, seven to nine. They can join me anytime. All you gotta do is go to YouTube, Monday nights, I'm live on YouTube, go to, go, just type in Black Watch on YouTube and I'll come up and you can jump in with us Monday Night Live and you know we'll comment, commute, talk to us. You can also leave your email address on our website. You can pay your tithes to us too if you want at a dollar sign ISUPK tithes. I, I hope I can plug that. Is that all right? Yeah, um, no, oh, okay. You can you can uh, pay your tithes that way or go to our website as well and hit the tithes button. They'll send you through PayPal or one of those. Everything is tax deductible. We're 501c3. And let's build our family and come together, you know, Definitely. keep on doing what we do. And, th well, and thanks so much for being on with you. Yeah, I'm so glad you came back. I really be enjoying our conversation. This time, I don't want us to wait so long. Hopefully, we can uh, meet back up in a couple months after Biden and Harris take over. So we can yeah. kind of talk about what's going on once that happens and get Excellent. people some clarity on, you know, where it's headed. Excellent. Sounds good. I'll, I'll let, I'll let uh, the brothers know. Okay. Maybe they can we'll keep in touch and we'll, we'll do it again soon. I appreciate that. Yeah, I yeah. Appreciate. thank you. Like I said, and thank you because, you know, doing that show with you, it really helped my career a lot. You know, it skyrocketed really? because I wasn't wow. afraid to talk to somebody outside of my comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's true. Whether we that's agree true. or, you know, disagree, right. at the end of the day, we can have a conversation and that's what we yeah. need to do. That's true. That's true. I hope this one does as good or better. Than yeah. that one. So now that'll be. Well, wonderful. I think I did achieve a lot since uh, three years ago, so I know. I'm, so. <laughs> I'm hearing the stories. I hear you. Through yeah. All that time. Girl, you I don't see why this would even that. be better than the last one. That, that's right. That's beautiful. Congratulations. Well, thank you so you. much. Thank y'all for tuning in. Please be sure to go check out the ISUPK. Learn more about it. Just. No, get out your comfort zone. Learn something different. See how it can change your life and the people lives around you. Don't be afraid of extremists, especially when it comes to the Black community, because extreme doesn't always mean pain or hurting or terrorism. It means protection in this way for us. We need that. Mm -hmm. So you guys, be sure to go check out the ISUPK. And thank you so much for tuning into another episode of The Blackout, where we always shine a light on Black excellence, activism, and culture right here on Afro Vibes Television. And if you want to stay up to date on any of our past ep episodes or any of our future events that we have coming up, you can actually check us out at www.afrovibesentertainment.com and tune into our live stream, afrovibes.tv. See you guys next time. Oh, it's not there.